Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, so my name is Courtney Jackson, um, and I'm really excited to be talking to you guys about digital marketing, um, social media, and repurposing and reusing content today. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about who I am. Um, well, I'm Courtney Jackson. Uh, I'm an author and a poet. I'm here local in Columbus, Ohio, and I have more than a decade of experience in digital marketing, uh, fundraising, event communications, event planning, and strategic communication. And I am the founder of Murado Media, which um, is my business where I teach authors, artists, and other creative professionals how to build a strategic digital marketing plan so that they can build their audience while still having the time and the focus to um, pursue their passion or their art. Uh, okay, so I'm going to try to go through um, this information that I have really quickly because I do want to get to the uh, the fun part of today, which is going to be kind of the little workshop uh, time that we have together. So I'm going to be going through some basic keys for building um, success for social media strategy and digital marketing. Um, I'm going to kind of default to social media, but when I'm talking about digital marketing, I'm not just talking about social media. A lot of the things that I'm talking about will apply to if you're building an email list, if you have a website, those kinds of things. So I'm going to try to use the term digital marketing, but a lot of the content today will be focused on social media. So just know that I'm sort of using those terms interchangeably, but what I actually mean with digital marketing is far more encompassing than just social media. Um, okay, so uh, the keys to building success really starts with building a strategy that works for you. Um, and I think that this is so important, especially as artists, you know, we are not the same as businesses or large corporations, those kinds of things who can pay people usually to run your social media for you. And so um, you need to be really aware of the commitment that you're willing to make and how much time that um, a social media strategy or a digital marketing strategy has for you. And that's going to be kind of your, your building block for your entire thing, because it does not matter if somebody has the best social media strategy or the best marketing strategy in the world, if you can't commit the time to be consistent to it, um, it's it's not going to work. So understanding the and building a strategy that really works for you and what you are doing is the most important thing to remember. Um, so there are three really basic components that it doesn't matter, again, corporations, independent artists, an influencer, um, a good social media strategy boils down to really knowing three things, knowing your brand, knowing your audience, and knowing your platform. Uh, so with knowing your brand, uh, with artists, our brand sort of is us. It's not just the artwork that we're doing, but people build the connection to who we are as people, which is a deeply personal thing. Um, and so that's why you have to keep in mind when you're doing this, it's good to keep in mind boundaries that you want to set for yourself and talking, uh, really be mindful again about how you want to be perceived and how much of yourself that you want to give, right? Because the internet will, um, it, it's, it's a hungry beast and it will kind of take from you forever. And so keeping those uh, boundaries in the back of your mind is going to, um, sorry, uh, is going to really establish the, the voice of your brand overall, because there will be things that you are willing to talk about and things that you're not willing to talk about. Knowing your audience, um, it's important to focus on not just who your audience currently is, but also who you want your audience to be and who you want to interact with. Um, so it's knowing their demographics is great. So, you know, are you, focus mostly on men, women, is there a certain location? Do you want them to have other general interests? Those kinds of things. Knowing your audience is really going to um, be a key because you're going to be able to pinpoint who they are to engage with them and also to find them in other places so that you can engage in a more organic way. And then the last part is knowing the platform. Every platform is different and a lot of people talk about 
um, in digital marketing and with social media, especially kind of knowing the algorithms and everything, everything is different. Nobody pays attention to the same rules. And so uh, it can be really overwhelming. So it's important to remember that you don't have to be everywhere. You know, everybody thinks like, oh my gosh, okay, so I need a Facebook account. I need a TikTok. I need an Instagram. Uh, do I need to be putting my stuff on Pinterest? Uh, do I need a, an email newsletter? Whatever. You don't have to have all of those things to be successful. Um, in fact, I find that people have more success when they don't try to be everywhere on the internet. Again, this is where you go back to knowing your audience. If you know who your audience is, you know what platforms they're going to be using. Um, if you are trying to market yourself to a younger Gen Z audience, you want to be on TikTok. If you want an audience that is a little bit older, you might go to Instagram or Facebook. Um, just know that whatever you choose, it's going to be okay. Um, because you can always, like, I, I like to say, find a home and then build from there. Um, also, I want to kind of take a moment to point out here that a lot of times people will, especially as new social media platforms come up, they'll be like, oh, uh, the big thing right now is Facebook and Instagram are dying, right? Nobody wants to use Facebook. Nobody wants to use Instagram. That is not true, right? Facebook and Instagram have more uh, active users daily than every other social media platform combined um, still. So yes, other social media platforms are becoming um, really popular still like TikTok, for example, but you can't just discount a social media like Facebook or Instagram um, because you, because people are saying that it's dying. That's, that's simply just not true. Okay. Um, so a lot of the time that people assume digital marketing equals like posting content and then getting sales. But what it actually is, is a little bit more complicated than that because your audience is going to live in a constant hierarchy that looks kind of like this triangle that I have. Um, no like trust. So step one is getting people to know you. And this happens just kind of organically when they stumble upon your page. Um, if it's recommended to them, if somebody points them at it, whatever. So this is just kind of when they they see your content around, maybe they see you once, twice. Um, generally, people say that it takes five to seven times for somebody to see your content before they will engage with you. Um, so uh, around that five to seven time mark is when you move into being liked by them. If they know you and they kind of recognize you, they start to like your content, they kind of start to vibe with it a little bit. They're gonna start to engage with you. They're gonna learn about your personality. And here is the really important part. It's this kind of level is when you want to engage with them. If you see somebody who is engaging with you, it's good to engage with them back. Um, because they are taking the step not to just consume whatever you're putting out there, but to also voice back at you. So um, by engaging with them, they're going to feel like you're, that you are supportive of them as well. And they, you start to build these online acquaintances and even friendships. And as this happens, people are more likely to direct others to your content. They're more likely to recommend you. They're more likely to share your links, those kinds of things. Um, and then as you move up into um, the trust level, this is kind of where all of the magic happens. And so when people start to trust you and just and start to trust your brand, they're going to feel a much more like personal connection to you. Sometimes um, they'll almost feel like, you know, they really know you uh, or, you know, like that they can almost speak for you, which I know for like influencers can be a little weird sometimes, but um, these are people who are going to like, kind of stick their neck out you, uh, stick their neck out for you and support you kind of on a digital level. Um, they're going to be more likely to buy from you, which is important. And then also important is after that first initial purchase, again, if you keep that trust and you have good quality work and they really like what you sent or what you give them, um, they're much more likely to be a returning customer. It is much easier to get a returning customer than it is to get a new customer. So maintaining those relationships is going to be really, really vital. Um, oops, I went backwards. Okay, 
So if there is one thing that you guys take away from this entire speech today, it's that consistency rules everything. The thing to remember is that it doesn't matter how good your content is if you aren't posting consistently and you aren't um, consistently engaging with people. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through today. All right, so for your digital marketing toolbox, um, this is why strategy is become so important, right? So batching and repurposing content is going to help you really think about your content and being purposeful about what you're posting and when you're posting and who you're posting it for. So we're going to talk really quick about some basic fundamentals for strategy and building out that toolbox and what it looks like. So the first step is you're going to have your content buckets or your pillars is sometimes what they're referred to as. And these are three to five themes that all of your content that you put out is going to fall into in some way or another. There are tons of lists out there on the internet that you can find about different kinds of buckets or pillars that people use. Some like to get very specific and some like to be a little broader. I tend to personally keep mine a little bit broader because they provide me some flexibility. However, that is because my brand online is very much a like authentic and open life. As in, I like to give a lot of personal details um, about myself on the internet <laughs> uh, because it, I, I don't know, I just feel like it's hard for me to not just be like totally who I am both online and offline. So, uh, but that in and of itself gives me some leeway to be a little bit random because people know my brand is that like sometimes I talk about things that are not necessarily my writing or things like that. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. The next thing that you want to do um, is update your bio. So on every social media platform that you that you see, you're gonna have like a little bio that where they give you just a very small um, a, a small space for you to talk about who you are a little bit. And um, this is oftentimes wasted real estate. People try to be really clever on there or say like kitschy things or be edgy or whatever. Um, and what you actually want to use that space for is to tell people exactly who you are, where you are and what you're doing so that they know whether or not they want to engage with you. Um, I actually personally used to be really bad at this. I always tried to like put a good quote on there or something like that. But I found that I got many more followers and much more engagement when I changed my bios to just say that I'm a storyteller, I'm a professional hype girl, and I'm here to teach audit, uh, artists, authors, and creatives how to use digital strategy. Um, this is really a snapshot that people are going to look at to, to understand who you are. So don't waste that real estate. At the end of the day, um, today, if there's one thing that you do, go back and update all of your bios. Um, the next thing I want you to do after uh, we've spruced up our bios is to make a top 25 list. And so this top 25 list is really going to be kind of your goals and aspirations. These are gonna be people who you would love to work with on your own, people, uh, so people you want to collaborate with, people you want to own your work, people you want to show your work, if there are galleries that you want, um, anything like that. So be realistic, but also don't be afraid to dream big. Like honestly, put down your top 25. If only 25 people in the world were going to see or engage with your content, who would you want them to be? I have a friend, Sam, who um, lives in Kentucky and she runs a uh, plus size clothing boutique. And Lizzo is on her top 25 list because she wants Lizzo to wear something from her store one day. Like that is her ultimate dream goal, right? Um, and so the idea behind this is that you are going to take that 25 lists and you are going to go find those people on or those places on the internet, wherever they are on their social media. And they're going to um, whatever your platforms are going to be and you're going to follow them and you're going to engage with them. Um, make sure that you are engaging with them at minimum once a month, not just like liking something, but, you know, commenting something and making it a good, um, a, a good comment that isn't just like, I don't know, just it, make sure that it's like linking back and making a connection to you guys in some way. Um, 
because people aren't going to want to collaborate with you if they don't know that you're out there. They're not going to want to buy your things if they don't know that your things are out there to be sold. So this is really important um, to, to have this list uh, because you're going to want to keep them in mind as you're building your strategy, because you're going to want to say, okay, if my top, somebody from my top 25 is looking at my platforms, what do I want them to see? What do I want them to know about me? The next thing is then going to be your posting strategy. So uh, once you have your pillars, you're going to decide um, how often you're going to post based on kind of best practices for what's there. Um, and then you're also going to decide uh, so decide how often to post and decide any other like topics or things like that, that you, that you want to post in there for that particular platform. Um, and then finally, you're going to test, evaluate and repeat. So this is really the fun part. Um, once you get a consistent schedule going and you're, you're posting content that are within those buckets, you're going to be able to really easily see what content is doing well and what content me needs to be shifted a little bit. Um, so for an example of this, I found that um, instead of talking about kind of my book in and of itself, when I'm talking about my own uh, books that I want to write, talking about my writing process gets a lot more engagement from people when, when I talk about my struggles and things like that, rather than just saying, hey, you should um, consider buying this book. So that's something that I found. That's something that other authors have found too. So um, just kind of, you're, you're going to be able to, to play around with your content a lot more once you have the strategy in place. And testing is going to be really valuable um, to do that. So that said, make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to really understand what content you can't just like change it up all the time. I would say like put your content pillars in place, get your, your main topics down, those kinds of things, and then give yourself three months of posting again, consistently with those pillars and seeing how your engagement goes, seeing how your followers go. Um, and then from there you can say, okay, what do I want to change? What seems to be doing well? three months seems to be kind of the, um, the, the good sweet spot for um, being able to recognize what content is actually being shared. Because again, remember, not everybody is going to see your content at the same time or um, at the same rate. Some, some people will see your content a lot more than other people will. Okay, so some things to remember. Um, don't just post, again, engage. That engagement portion is really, uh, really, really crucial. Keep to the 80-20 rule. A lot of artists um, are really concerned about coming off as like salesy or slimy through their social media. And a good way to avoid that is to keep the 80-20 rule in mind. The 80-20 rule um, basically just says that you should, you should not be saying, buy my stuff more than 20% of the time um, on your social media. Otherwise you're falling into those other um, buckets. That said, don't not promote yourself, right? I would say at least 5% of the time, you should be telling people where they can find your stuff and how they can buy it. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind uh, when you are making those posts, you can kind of gauge how often are you saying, here's a link to go buy my, to go buy my art um, or you know, download something, those kinds of stuff. And then um, when in doubt, go back to your plan. Again, when you have a strategy, um, you're going to notice a lot of what is working and what isn't working. Um, and if things start to fall off or if you, you get a good pace and you're doing really well and then things kind of stagger out, you can always kind of go back to your plan and make sure that you haven't strayed from it too far. And if you have, you can identify what has changed from when you were kind of peaking to where you're, where you're leveling off and again, test and evaluate. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about repurposing content. Sorry, I'm trying to go really quickly. Um, so here's just an example of repurposing content. You guys don't have to recreate the wheel every time with your content. Um, because remember that people aren't going to see every post that you make, and they aren't going to see those posts at the same time necessarily, especially um, on places like TikTok. TikTok shows videos like at random. So don't 
don't be afraid to reuse content because that's going to actually help your brand with the consistency. Um, continually pushing out the same message is going to be, again, how you build your brand and how people feel like you're sharing a good, consistent message. And it's only going to feel like you uh, are rehashing things to you because you have a holistic overview of what your entire strategy looks like. So really quickly, here's just an example of how this can work. You have your pillar, which is going to be your art. Um, a topic idea if we're talking about um, art, you can always talk about what like your favorite tools that you use to create your art. So say you have your fa a favorite paintbrush that you want to use. Um, so three ideas for Instagram, um, posting just a stagnant photo, uh, a story where you're kind of using or talking about your uh, this brush, and then a reel, uh, creating a reel that has like a transition where maybe you're like, running the brush along a blank canvas and then you swipe and it transitions to your full painting. So that has a two way, right? Because it's talking about this brush, but also you get to show some of your work, which is great. Um, don't forget if you're talking about a brush or um, talking about like a tool or something, you can also tag whatever company is making it and you're going to get engagement from them, which will push you to other people's pages, right? So then that photo becomes also a Facebook post and potentially a Pinterest post. The story can also be a Facebook story and the reel can be, um, can go onto TikTok and the story can also go onto TikTok. So again, you can kind of see how just one pillar, one topic can turn into seven or nine posts across three different platforms over time. And you don't have to necessarily like post all of these in orders, you can save some of those um, videos to post later on. And here's a tip that I'll give you. If you are doing like trends on TikTok or something like that, those trends start trending on Instagram about three to five weeks later. So download those TikTok videos that you're making um, and save them without the TikTok logo on them. And then put them on your Instagram reels in three weeks when that sound is trending. Um, as you engage more, you'll see what sounds are trending and what trends you want to jump up on. And uh, that'll be, you'll see how that all works. Okay, so that is the um, little presentation that I have. I want to now, I'm going to have to stop sharing for a second, get into uh, the workshop portion where I have a spreadsheet that I am going to use. And this is a spreadsheet. You guys can set up something like this that works entirely for you. This is just kind of how my brain works. And this is something that I give my clients that I work with. Um, I think Roman is going to paste the link into the chat there. So if you click on this, you're going to have to go to um, file at the top and then make a copy to be able to edit this and make it your own. Um, but you should be able to do that. So at the, and I'm going to share mine because again, this is literally the system that I use. Um, uh, let me share my screen again. Try this again. Okay, here we go. Can you guys see that okay? So as you guys open up this tab, um, I need to move this over to the screen so that I can see it. You're gonna see your content pillars at the top. And so this is all color coded for you guys. Um, you're gonna see, so you already have two content pillars off the top of your head, right? You have your artwork and you have um, yourself. Uh, it's really important, again, as artists, because like people connect to us, that you guys should like, don't be afraid to talk about yourself on your, your social media. You don't have to get like deep into it, but you know, even just sharing things like what you're eating for lunch or um, a, a, a struggle that you're having that maybe other people can kind of relate to, they're going to connect with that. And you're going to see a lot of engagement from that because people, again, are more and more going to feel a more personal connection to you. Um, 
you can see on mine. So one of my content pillars is that I like to um, hype people up. I love to do like book reviews. Um, I love to talk about like art I love, or if I buy something and I really love it, like stickers or notebooks. I am notorious for buying handfuls of notebooks at a time. Um, those kinds of things. I love to just kind of show them off and then tag the people that um, I'm talking about with that. So, and then I have a Kickstarter coming up in June because I'm launching a Kickstarter for um, a ch children's book that uh, I'm trying to self-publish. So uh, my next couple months are gonna be uh, doing a lot of that. And then there's a fifth one. So you guys can fill in your content pillars with whatever kind of content you want, but this is just what mine looks like. Um, the next is the date. So I just went ahead and did all of the dates up until the end of June for you guys. Um, it's an algorithm. So you can just take those dates and click down and pull and it will continue to do those dates. Over here at the bottom, there's an archive tag. So after you get like a handful of things, you can, after you've posted them and all that kind of stuff, you can copy them and put them in the archive tab. And that way you can always just like reference in the um, what you've done in the past and kind of an easy look over. This tab here, um, this I just put in the content pillars, A, B, C, D, E, and then had them randomize in a different pattern throughout the spreadsheet. And so the point of this spreadsheet is to have you make as few decisions as possible so that you don't spend time thinking about, oh, what do I need to do? What should I do? And instead, it just gets you to get to the content part, right? So that's what this is. So it's telling you what pillar you're going to post about that day. And you can decide whether or not you want to do that. And you can schedule these in advance. If you want to sit down for an hour and do a week of social media and just write down all of your content, you can either schedule them in the platform themselves on Facebook or Instagram. You can do that with like the business suite or otherwise you can get onto um, a free website like Hootsuite or there, there are a lot of them out there where you can schedule your content and it will push it out for you. Um, so that's called batching your content. And it's really helpful because then you can kind of set it and forget it. I know people who literally do their social media a month at a time, and then they don't look at their social media unless they're going to go on and engage with people. Um, so that's a big, big time saver that you guys can use. This next list um, breaks down, again, it's trying to help you take away a decision. You can take or leave whether or not you use this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So for social media, um, especially one of the things that they tell you is you want your content to do one of three things. You want it to educate, entertain, or inspire. Um, and so again, this is just taking apart or taking away that um, decision for you. And so you can look across and say, okay, today's April 18th. I'm going to post about something about my artwork. It's going to be something rather educational. Today I posted, my content idea was I'm going to do a workshop reminder and remind people like, hey, I'm doing this work this workshop, you should log on and join me today. So that's what I posted on all of my social media this morning. It's really, really simple. Um, and then you can see, and so on this pillar, it's all color coded. So if you decide like right here, I have three E's in a row. If I don't want to do three days of that particular content, I can just go ahead and say, I'm going to do an artwork post, make it an A, and it's going to change that color for you. So that's how that's how the spreadsheet works. Um, if you guys have questions about it, you can feel free to, to let me know. Um, but I want you guys to go ahead and start thinking about kind of what you think your content pillars are going to be in the list below here, um, below the content pillars. I like to just keep a running ideas basically of different topics or different things that could fall within that pillar. And that's going to help you um, kind of, you can always look back and say, okay, I haven't done, I haven't done a quote in a while. So we're going to do that. Or I haven't done a funny story or uh, a top five lists are great. They're kind of a default. I know you see them everywhere, but they're great because you can repurpose that content, right? One TikTok about your top five favorite books can become five Instagram posts about each one being their own, you know, their own book or whatever. So that's, that's why you see a lot of those lists. It's because it's really easy to then take bits and pieces of those contents and repurpose them into different things. Um, 
This is also really great for if you have a, a newsletter that you're sending out at all, you're going to be able to kind of look at what you have posted overall over the last month and pick and choose pieces from this to add to your newsletter to help fill in some gaps for you. So feel free to take a little bit of time. I know that we're, um, we've got about 20 minutes ish left for the entire after, uh, presentation today. So if you guys want to start with some questions, I'm happy to answer those as people are working on them. People can ask more questions. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm going to stop sharing my Great. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Let's all give like Sorry, a, I threw a lot of information at you guys. No, so. you did not. It was wonderful. I was like taking notes because I will say I do not, I don't have like a, an independent business and I am kind of a hot mess on social media and that I just like post pictures. I don't use filters. I don't care if it's mm -hmm. blurry. Um, but a lot of what you were saying really resonated with me and like utilizing social media just to self promote and promote others and how it kind of creates this ecosystem of support that you're not right. in it alone. So yeah, people, I, I always like to remind people that like, it's called social networking for a reason. Um, so being purposeful about who you are engaging with, especially because um, the more that you engage with them, the more likely they are to see your content. So yeah, something to keep in mind again. And that's why like your top 25 list is so important because maybe at some point, somebody from there is going to see what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, we do have questions, so I'm just going to right. read them in the order that they were received um, okay. and in the order, the way in which they were written. So if something doesn't make sense, please let me know. And maybe the individual um, who wrote it can, can clarify. So first question, what is the best way to filter scammers, offers to buy, subscribe, follows, et cetera, from legitimate engagement and or business opportunities, such as brand partnerships? Um, if somebody is offering to like to give you X amount of followers or whatever, or basically if anybody comes to you and guarantees that you'll get X amount of followers or this amount of engagement or whatever, it's a scam. They're lying to you. Nobody can predict the algorithm. Um, nobody can predict what you're saying. And a lot of the times, even if they can give you those um, things like buying followers and buying like engagement, that kind of stuff can actually really tank your social media because that stuff gets picked up by the algorithm um, because it can tell because a lot of the time it comes as all of a sudden you get 700 people from relatively the same like IP, those kinds of stuff because they aren't usually real people. It's just to help you make your ratio of who you follow versus who follows you look better. Um, but that's that's not a thing. You're, you're going to be a lot better off just doing organic engagement. And then, um, if you, if you do want to do like ads or promoting, like paying money to promote that kind of stuff, do it through the platform itself, um, rather than a, a company or a person, because that's, that's really what you're doing. Um, cut out that middleman and just do it through the company itself. Do a Facebook ad, pay an Instagram promoter, whatever. That said, now, if you have the chance to like work with an influencer or somebody like that, that's a totally different conversation. Um, you should pay people money to promote your things. Um, if that's what they're asking you to do, like respect people's choices for just like you would want somebody to respect whatever price you price your art at, you should respect what price an influencer says um, their, their time and content is worth. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Sorry, I was taking notes. No, that's okay. I was typing. All right. Thank you for that. We got I'm more. I'm going to share my more. screen again and just pop my um, contact information up here for people. Perfect. Awesome. We were getting more questions in while you were speaking. So I was doing that as well. All right. Um, are you ready for the next question? Yeah. Awesome. Does Courtney have a go-to strategy resource on when to post? I've seen a lot of different graphics saying certain times of the day have a higher interaction rates depending on the platform. Um, so it really depends on the platform. And honestly, again, your content is going to tell you Facebook. Um, is, if you're using Facebook and Instagram via like business suite or meta suite or whatever it's called now, um, their, their background information will kind of tell you like when you're getting the most engagement um, there are other tools out there, like, I think it's called Metricool or something like that, um, where, the, and that's like a scheduling, um, uh, 
social media scheduling tool. Um, they will give you some insight too. So it, a lot of it, unfortunately, really is just kind of posting and seeing, seeing what works. Thank you. So again, this is where knowing your audience really comes in handy because if you know your audience, like maybe they have like nine to five jobs or something like that, you're going to post, you know, at two o'clock when you know people are in their lunch coma and scrolling on social media instead of doing their work. Um, but if you are a musician and you're trying to get into clubs, those people are more active at three o'clock in the morning. So you should post at three o'clock in the morning. So that's kind of where knowing your audience comes in. Great tips. All right, next question. Curious about thoughts on having separate Instagram accounts for different projects, especially if you want to keep personal life separate from certain projects. And then going along with that, we received another question. I'm just going to group them together. Should mm -hmm. I have a personal business account or just focus on my business account and make it more personal? So we, I think we see this a lot. We've actually had speakers on this platform before mm -hmm. talk about personalizing your business account, not making it so stale, but also maybe not oversharing. What mm -hmm. is oversharing? We all have different different definitions of that, on that and living. What does it mean to be living authentically through your brand? So maybe we can dive a little bit deeper into this question versus just business versus personal. Yeah. So this is, this, so this is, I'm going to put out something that's like a very generic advice and then dig into it a little bit more. Um, so my very generic advice is that if you want to have um, two accounts, so say a, your own personal media and then your business account, um, definitely do that. And, but make sure that you on your personal account are following the same people that your business account is, because what I want you to do is go into your business account, um, and follow them or whatever, but go on your personal account and engage with them. So that way, when they click on your bio, they're going to see your business account in your bio, because again, you've updated that bio to say who you are and what you're doing. And that will eventually send them to the um, business account, but if you're mostly like interacting on your personal account, then, and you're not necessarily posting as much on your business account, then that's where you, you, you want to, them to really be wherever, um, you want to engage with whatever account is really your primary account. So some people like to go and just just have and say, I'm not doing a separate business account. I'm just going to have one where I talk about my business and I also, um, just talk about random, whatever I want. And that's fine. What you're essentially saying there is your business is a pillar, um, or your business is one of your content buckets and just make sure then that you're being really purposeful about when you're using that content bucket and how often. I hope that answers that question. I think that does. Thank you so much. Um, let me just go scroll here quickly and make sure we didn't miss anything. Again, if you have additional questions, please feel free to send those to me um, in the chat. Um, you did my other question, which was how can we connect with you? Um, is there a platform that you tend to check more or use certain emails or, or platforms for um, I'm trying to reach out? So uh, I'm a child of the internet and I live on the internet, so you can really connect with me however you want and I will get it. Um, but so funnily enough, I just started a new Instagram for my business at Murado uh, Media LLC. So if you want to follow that and help me out a little bit, that would be helpful um, for Instagram. But honestly, so you can IM me there, you can uh, DM me um, in LinkedIn. I would love more LinkedIn followers. So kind of wherever, wherever you want to be, I probably am. So um, don't follow me on TikTok because my TikTok is really strictly for like writing things. So if you're, you happen to find me on book talk, um, no, you didn't. I have a question and I'm wondering, sure. I, I love a good LinkedIn post. I also think mm -hmm. that LinkedIn is a super interesting social platform because you can get all different types of people mm -hmm. um, on the platform posting all different types of things, maybe not so business related when it should be, should be more focused um, mm -hmm. a place where people can explore maybe their side hustles or their passions if they're on boards mm -hmm. or things like that. How do you utilize LinkedIn and what is your advice for creatives utilizing LinkedIn? Um, is it yeah. a great platform? Is it not a great platform? Is it, is it even necessary? Um, so I would actually say that it is necessary, um, but I'm going to, so here's what I'm going to say, right? So for LinkedIn, especially about a third of the 
um, okay, so the uh, most of the content on LinkedIn comes from about a third of the users because most people only are going on there like when they get a notification or when they're job searching or whatever. Um, or they're just like browsing it, but they don't necessarily, they aren't putting out the content themselves because they're really just looking there for opportunity, which means that if you are one of the people posting, your content is much more likely to be seen by the people who are following you or the people in your network. So as you build your network up, because everybody feels like they should have a LinkedIn um, because it is good for job searching, et cetera, and connecting professionally, they're gonna see your content more um, because most of their, uh, their connections are not posting. So I think you can go into LinkedIn and be really strategic about the kinds of content you're posting and how you're promoting yourself in your business. Um, if you're freelancing, especially, I think that it's really a great place to set yourself up as an expert and you're going to get more and more connections from there. It's actually something that I started doing very recently because I was not utilizing my LinkedIn at all. Um, and I've gotten a couple cool collaboration um, connections from there. So it, it's been um, interesting and I definitely, uh, definitely suggest that you start actually putting content out on LinkedIn, even if it's not very often, right? It doesn't have to be very often because people aren't necessarily checking their LinkedIn very often. So it's going to pop up on the algorithm differently for them. Makes perfect sense. Another algorithm, another day, another problem with algorithms. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And we have a question. Um, I'm going to read it directly. Okay. Uh, this person says, I'm at the point of not knowing how to begin with actually selling my art online, AKA how to make prints and how to sell them. Like, do I use Etsy, etc." So currently I'm not yet at the point of being able to actually promote my products to my followers uh that's not true you can promote you can promote it by just sharing your art and then when you when when so start sharing your art and start sharing what you're doing and like the reasons that you're doing it and that kind of stuff and then you can be interacting with other artists people who are liking those other artists so find other artists who are doing similar things to you and then look at who's following them and engage with their followers. And then theoretically those followers will engage with you because they have already liked somebody similar to you. Um, and then when you are ready, whenever that is to launch your Etsy or your Shopify or however you wanna start selling your art, then you have that base that you can go ahead and say, hey, thanks so much for liking all of my stuff, you guys. Here's some really exciting news about this. Uh, you know, You can now purchase prints of some of my photos. Uh, those kinds of things. So you can absolutely start sharing your art and start sharing um, it, like start engaging with people now, even if you aren't, um, even if you aren't necessarily ready to launch. So true. Couldn't agree more. Um, again, I apologize. This whole presentation, I have been typing, taking Yeah, it's okay. No. It's, it's a I'm lot like, of information. There's so much out there and there's so much that like, and that's why, you know, I have um, with Murata, uh Media, I people can either hire me to do their content and their marketing strategy for them, or I can kind of take the time and have do it with you, um, kind of VIP days is what I call it, and sit down and basically we do all of the strategy together. We do all of this, we do, you know, hashtags, we do everything that you got, you need to be able to set yourself up. And then um, from there, you can kind of do it yourself, so. But it, it is, it's a lot. And if you haven't been doing it, then it feels, can feel very overwhelming to step into it. Um, but just remember that like, at the end of the day, it's fine. Like it's also just social media. Like people are there to escape and have fun and get some cool content. So like you can't, unless you want to go and do something like extremely controversial, which don't, um, you, you can't screw it up. Always a good, I remember someone telling me one time with social, cause again, I, I don't, I just post like pictures from family vacations and things like that. But someone saying like, if you're on social and you think, would this be controversial? Maybe just don't post it. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> so there's a difference because sometimes controvert controversy is good. And a lot of people will use controversial ideas or, you know, whatever to get more engagement because then, you, you know, you start that dialogue and that conversation. It just, it kind of depends on how you set it up and you just need to be very careful about how you go about setting it up um, so that you don't necessarily like offend anybody, but you can definitely talk about controversial things still. 
Absolutely. Great point. Um, real quick before I wrap up here, I want you to pitch about your upcoming children's book. Um, if yeah. you can do an elevator pitch on that and then we'll pass it back to Rowan for final announcements. Sure. Um, so my Kickstarter is kicking off in June. You can follow me on social media, follow my personal account to get more information on that. Um, it is uh, the first in a series of books that I want to do that introduces the concept of somebody in your family transitioning to children. So um, my partner, my spouse transitioned over the last couple of years after, you know, I've been married to them for six years together for 10. And um, we really found we have a child together and we found that there aren't um, a lot of books that dedicate themselves really to how, what, what it's like when all of a sudden you go from having a brother to having a sister or having an aunt to having an uncle or going from a mom and a dad to two moms, those kinds of things. And so um, the, this is the first in a series that will kind of take that overall topic and come at it in a different way in various children's books. So you can follow me for more on that. Great. And when will that Kickstarter become live? Will it we'll just go live? Will, will you post on your social when it goes live? June 1st. June awesome. 1st is my, uh, is my start date. Awesome. It's my deadline for myself. That. But it's definitely a needed book in today's uh, library of worldly yeah. books. And, yeah. Thank you, Laura. Um, it actually, this, this first book, um, it actually kind of came from how my, the conversation that, that is in it came from the questions that my nephew and niece asked when um, we talked about my wife transitioning. And so it, it, and the questions that, you know, kids ask aren't what you think that they would. Parents are afraid that they're going to have these really deep conversations. And my nephew wanted to know if they would still get to play baseball together. Like th those are the things that kids care about. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a really great project. Courtney, thank you so much for being here today. We so appreciate yeah. your time. I could listen to you talk forever. Um, but unfortunately we actually were right on time, but unfortunately this is just a, a, a drop in the bucket to all the things you're doing. We can't wait to see all the wonderful things that you continue to do in the future. Thank you for your time today. If we could all give her a virtual round of applause. I see lots of people commenting in the chat. Thank you. Thank you I'm everybody. Sorry. I kind of threw so much information at you, but there's a lot to go over. So I hope that this was really helpful for you guys. Um, I would love if you guys start using this and start seeing results, I would love for you to connect with me and let me know um, if it, if it didn't work for you and you have suggestions, I would also love to hear that. So definitely um, keep in touch. Awesome. Thank you. And again, all your information, although a lot was super uh, mm -hmm. helpful and intuitive and I, I love a good organized slide deck. So that you good. definitely had that. <laughs> I'm going to pass it back to Roman now with closing announcements and updates of what you can expect from Wild Goose this yeah. month, but thank you all super uh, appreciate your time today and uh, go forth and have a great rest of your week.